remind you uh, that uh, when you do those three bows to Kaishi, just as when you you're bowing at other times to one another or to a teacher, it's really not to the person. It's to the idea of the, and particularly in this ceremony, is the idea of the power of the precepts, the power and importance for each one of us, both intimately, psychologically with our, ourself and relationally with those we relate to and communally in the world, uh, how important these precepts are. And, you know, they are, in fact, so common. I mean, you look at just about any uh, spiritual or humanistic tradition and you can actually take the precepts and, and cross them across and see how they respond, uh, how they are responsive and, and uh, so even the wording is similar in, in all the traditions because these are, these are guidelines about living with other beings and also living in our own minds, in our own hearts and how we can take care of ourselves. So, you know, just sort of briefly, I, I like to just remind ourselves that the whole, the whole ritual tradition is about helping us to house this wisdom. And, uh, you know, we do it in a kind of uh, East Asian way, uh, Chinese and then Japanese inflected, and now Western style is here too. Uh, but we begin um, uh, with the practice. Of, there's a lot of bowing, which is, is so good for us. You know, we kind of we walk around and look down on everything, and it's good to, you know, put, uh, as someone said to me, which I think is so right, uh, putting our heads down and our asses above our heads. <laughs> Just realize our kind of fundamental humanness. Uh, and... Uh, and so we do, we do the, the, the three prostrations. And, and are we bowing to an idol or are we bowing to the notion of waking up and being aware and awake of what we're thinking, what we're feeling, what we're acting and how we're relating in the world in the short lifespan that we have. Uh, and so, you know, in, on most Zen uh, temples, uh, in, the, in the Zendo, the, the uh, the figure is a manjusri, and manjusri ha always holds some kind of an implement for cutting away our delusions. And we can't stop doing that. It is so important, it's so easy to get caught up in our ideas about how things are, or what we're seeing, or what we're experiencing. So we need that energy. And uh, so, that's why that particular figure is so important to us. So when we, we say, I'm, I'm, I'm one with that energy, it's, it's very powerful. Of course, we begin it with the verse of atonement, which is like taking in all of the, uh, all of the times we slip and say, whoops, I atone for that. I become one with it. I acknowledge it. Oh yeah, I did it again. But in that acknowledgement and in that awareness of uh, our thoughts and uh, our actions and our speech, uh, we, become, uh, we become changed in just acknowledging it and, we, and it helps us to, uh, to not do that again. Even though some of these things we feel like we've been doing over and over again since we were two years old. Uh, and after we've done the verse of atonement, I atone for it all. Yes, and now what? I need these energies, like Manjusri's energy, and we say, uh, I, I need the energy of uh, Samantabhadra, is one of my favorite ones. Uh, yeah, it's uh, this big warrior on an elephant, and it just represents the power of vow. I can do this. Whatever the, the difficulty is, Whatever the challenge is, oh, we can do that. And it's lovely to have that, that image of uh, Samantabhadra with us. And so you have Manjusri cutting away our uh, delusions and Samantabhadra saying, yes, you can go for it. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Avalokiteshvara, uh, rather, whether represented as a man or a woman, 
is uh, uh, in, in the imagery is this energy of a constantly being of use and serving in whatever way it makes sense in the moment uh, with whatever tool makes sense to use to, uh, to serve. And uh, then there's Maitreya, the, the Buddha to come, which each of us embody in our own peculiar way. So that, that's the ceremony that we do. And, and then the, usually there's a little talk about a precept. And um, I particularly, uh, because of the Mueller reports and everything, I'm very much uh, thinking a lot about the precept of not stealing, uh, the precept of uh, greed. And, uh, and to remember, you know, uh, the Buddhist teachings, and certainly they're not the only ones, but in the Buddhist teaching, greed is the first thing we talk about. This is the way we are as beings. Greed, anger, and ignorance. And our, our work is to turn that around, turn that greed around so that we can use that same kind of energy to serve the world, to serve ourselves, our loved ones, and the world. Uh, and yet we have to acknowledge that that's there. That's a a current of energy. You know, now we're seeing so much in the news about it. And, uh, you know, there's the Mueller report. There's Hudson Yards, which somehow managed to take the... Uh, th there were cer certain allocations for height that uh, they gerrymandered all the way up to Harlem to get this. These. And if you've been to Hudson Yards, it's a monument to, to greed. It's just... Unbelievable, even though you took a beautiful picture. <laughs> it's a mon and, and so it's like, oh my gosh, uh, it's all around us. And then we see it in our own individual lives, our own greed, uh, grasping. Um, so, you know, we always go back to the, the kind of, in the Zen tradition, what. Uh, Actually, I was just reading some history today. Uh, the Bodhidharma's one mind precept seems to have been an invention in the 15th century in Japan, uh, as much as we like to think of it as Bodhidharma in China in 560. Um, but his one mind precepts uh, on the second precept is uh, second, uh, the self nature is subtle and mysterious in the realm of the unattainable dharma, not giving rise to, to gaining is the precept of not stealing. So in the realm of the unattainable dharma, you can't grasp it. There's nothing that's graspable. And yet, you know, the human energy is to go for it, to gain it. And that's what... Uh, that, preach, that teaching of bodhidharmas is, uh, it is intrinsic in our nature, and yet it is unattainable. And when we use our, our intellect and our, and our insight, uh, we realize that every thought of gaining is stealing. Gaining me against you, or against whatever's around. A very powerful one. And, and Dogen follows up in a very similar way. Uh, Dogen uh, says, uh, what does he say? Uh, Self and the world are just as this. Thus, the gate of emancipation is open. So, self and the world are just what they are. And the way he puts it is, it's, we can be free. We can just be in the world without this, <gasps> give me. I take it from you because I, w I want it. So, very simple uh, notion of, of Dogen's. And um, uh, the Zen peacemakers, our group, uh, put together, is that being satisfied with what I have is the precept of not stealing. Being satisfied with what I have is the precept of not stealing. So how can we, you know, bring that into our own, first of all, just 
intrapsychically, just in our own intimate self, really coming to terms with who we are and how we are in the world and what we have and don't have. I mean, you know, it's spring. We all have spring right now. It's amazing out there. Uh, and to, to really experience that sense of being satisfied with that. And uh, then relationally, you know, uh, how is it that we steal? Steal someone's time, steal attention, you know. We have very subtle ways of stealing. Uh, and then, of course, if we look around the world, not so subtle ways of stealing. Uh, and, you know, this is nothing new. This is, I mean, we had the robber barons in the 19th century, you know, uh, just the Lenape ground that we walk on. We took that and we, sent, and we gra gathered those people whose land it was and put them in the middle of the country. Uh, so it's around us all the time. And how can we be with that and see that, that, that that's an aspect? So, the Buddha's teaching is, yes, there is greed. Yes, there is anger, the hate, which is largely driven by greed, our wanting things. And then the, the real crux of it is the ignorance. We don't recognize that we are not two that we have everything, just like we have spring. How marvelous. <laughs>